Hello and welcome to The Other Marthas, the show where a drama student and a film graduate try to make sense of things we wish we were qualified in instead. A quick disclaimer before we get started, we do not claim to be experts in any of the fields we'll be discussing, so while everything we say will be based on individual research, it's just a bit of fun and we suggest that you take everything we say with a pinch of salt. I'm Martha, I'm the drama student. And I'm the other Martha, the film graduate. And Martha, we're doing things a bit differently today, aren't we? Yes, we are. I... I'm telling you about a mountain mystery. The secret of how this podcast works is uh, that we're recording this after the fact, because as it turns out, we got so into discussing Martha's mountain mystery that we decided to just save mine until next week. First of all, I want to say I researched this while I was home alone (laughs) and I frightened myself and I then like roamed my house. Before I'd open every door, I'd be like, there might be someone here who's going to kill me and I I won't be surprised (laughs) if there is and I'll just open the door and punch them like I was ready. Um, That's really cool. I love how as well, it's like, I I know a bit about this case that you're going to cover and it's nothing to do with like people getting into houses or anything like that it's completely but somehow you still managed to get freaked by which I think is quite sweet I got freaked out and I was writing my little notes and Mm. I kept glancing over my shoulder I was only leaving my desk to Mm. attend to my dog who Ned is here with us again this episode when I would attend to my dog Mm. it reminded me of something that I consciously never say to him when I let my dog in to my house I never say come in I always <gasps> say I always say come on and the reason I do that is in case he's been replaced by a shape-shifting vampire <laughs> the thing is, got- when you said it I got really like chilled but I knew yeah. that was what you were gonna say and that's stupid <laughs> so you know that's that's my <laughs> thing that I do for my dog. On to the actual thing that I'm talking about. Let me just have a sip of my water. I think. Is that what you're doing, the Dyatlov Pass? I am doing the Dyatlov Pass mystery. The Dyatlov hiking party was made up of students and recent graduates from the Yuri Polytechnical Institute. Mm. And also one older hiker who was like trying to become a ski instructor. Mm. One question. Um, yes. Where are these? Where are we? Where is the dialogue? We where are these people? are in Russia. Oh, they're in the wilds of Russia, having a great time. And they're Russian. Yes. Cool. In 1959, mm-hmm. which bit of history? Cold War. Ooh. What a party! What Space race. Party. All of that is going on. So there were eight men and two women. They were all extremely experienced hikers and they were being led by Igor Dyatlov. Some fun facts about some of the party. Mm -hmm. Yuri Doroshenko, on a previous trip, had stood up to a bear with a geologist's hammer. Oh my god. Yeah, again, that's one of those things like panicking snake hair. That's the kind of thing I could see myself doing. Like if we were stupid, like I wouldn't do well. But if we're like, oh no, there's a bear, let's lay low. And I'd be like, oh, you have a hammer, don't you? Give it to me. And then I'd realise I'd royally screwed up. There are some bears, because I don't live in a place where bears are, I don't know all of the rules about bears. Mm. But there's like one kind of bear that if you like are bigger and roar at them, they run away. And then there's one where you play dead, like there's variants. Yeah. Another one of the hikers, Lauda Dubinina. I'm also not Russian, so I can't pronounce anything. Um, Was once shot in the leg on a hike and had to walk back to camp. So these are like seasoned adventure hikers. Not only are they like seasoned, but they're like tough. Yeah. Like there are people who've been on hikes and never fought a bear with a hammer or been shot in the yeah. leg and these people uh, have decided to go on another hike after this yeah so, they're like... so they were they picked a really difficult route mm. because they were trying to reach level three of hiking which is the highest level you could reach in the soviet union at the time so they're also doing it for a qualification it's I like see. the most intense D of E you've ever done yeah <laughs> i was gonna say i think our D of E went worse than theirs but Oh, we I mean, survived. We, we've lived to tell the tale, so. <laughs> Along their way, they stopped at this logging village. And when they reached there, it was like their last checkpoint. And Yuri Yudin, who was one of their party, turned back 
because he had joint pain. Oh yeah, yeah. Couldn't do it. Dyatlov organised with his sports club. I guess that they were like doing the qualification through. Mm-hmm. He would send them a telegram on the twelfth of February once they completed their hike. Mm-hmm. Do you know what date they set out on? I know they set out in late January. Oh, okay, okay. The telegram never arrived. So a couple of days after the telegram didn't arrive, mm-hmm. everyone was like, oh, like initially they were like, well, you know, it takes time. a little time. bit longer, yeah. To hike through snow and mountains. Yeah. Give them time. But then volunteers from their university set out to Oh, these were uni them. people. So their lecturers and fellow students oh. volunteered to find them. Which, like, <laughs> I wish I had that sort of commitment from yeah. my university, because that would not have happened. Yeah. Russian university communities in the 60s, apparently, we stand. Well, they were, like, communists, so... Yeah, good point. Every Surely, man for every man. Later, they were joined by the police and the army. So finally, on the 26th of February, their camp was found. It took their time to find them, but you know. Yeah, like two weeks odd. The tent was partially collapsed and mm-hmm. snow had settled on it. And the hiker's boots and possessions were still inside the tent. Hmm. At this point, I changed pens. Well, I changed <laughs> ink from, I have, I think it's called Space Grey. I changed to... Um, some black ink that's literally called mystery black oh could not be more perfect the tent seemed to have been slashed reportedly Mm. cut from the inside oh like the more i think about it the more i hate it they hiked through a snowstorm on the 2nd of february Uh. and they were kind of thrown off course by the snow and ended up camping on what the local tribes people call in their language dead mountain oh but it's called that because nothing grows there and there's no prey right but obviously like it's dead mountain that's terrifying yeah (laughs) there were footprints leading away from the tent they looked like they were in a hurry the footprints suggested that none of the hikers was wearing a full pair of shoes only one was shoe like deep snow wasn't it this is like february in russia yeah deep yeah. snow like like it's frostbite not... in minutes deep snow yeah it's not like you know how um because when i first heard of this i was like oh they were camping and they ran out of their tent like you know in yeah the, but it's like i thought... expedition style of camping as opposed to like D V. my thought of camping is like you go camping in the summer and yeah. If you ran out of your tent without shoes or boots on, you're fine. Yeah. No, no, it's not a good time. You wouldn't do it, especially mm. not if you knew what you were doing. Two bodies were found around one mile from the camp at the tree line. I was thinking about this the other day. In their diaries, they wrote that their average speed was one mile an hour, mm. which means that these two people one mile from the camp would have been travelling for an hour without Barefoot. boots or proper clothing. Jesus in deep snow yeah so there's that yeah (laughs) they were lying by a campfire Mm -hmm. they had burns on their hands and their feet which is like so sad that they were basically burning their to try and get feeling back into them presumably there was also a tree with all of the branches knocked down Mm. and the branches were lying underneath one of the bodies suggesting Mm. that he'd climbed either to get a vantage point having lost the others or to look for the camp yeah. or to gather firewood is another mm. thought from the post-mortem they were both declared to have died from hypothermia which i mean yeah because yeah. they were out in the wilderness in a state of undress but then it's like, like these guys made them they would be very very aware of the danger of that so what was so yeah. terrifying that they were like we'll take our chances barefoot down this yeah hill. well these guys were also found only wearing their underwear Jeez. there's a theory that's been postulated here which is that they might have had paradoxical undressing which is where when you have hypothermia your body feels like it's burning really yeah so they undress to cool down and mm. then you die because you have yeah. hypothermia and now you're naked yeah oh god but then they have burns on their feet so they clearly not necessarily at the same time but knew that that 
it was hypothermia and they were cold and they needed to warm up. Three more bodies were found along the path from the camp to the tree line Mm -hmm. where the other bodies were found with their campfire. One of them had a fractured skull and they were all also partially clothed and they seemed to be positioned as though they were attempting to return to the camp. But again, all of them were put down to hypothermia, which might have been like the cause of death first but one of them had a fractured skull so like yes they may have died of hypothermia before the fractured skull could do them them. enough harm to kill them but like why how did they get a fractured skull yeah did it say anything about like the level of damage or or whether it looked like they'd been hit by an instrument or one video that i watched said that it was like enough to cause like brain hemorrhaging oh so and also like a fractured skull is never like a casual no oh, no. i didn't know i had a fractured <laughs> skull for years whoops, fell and fractured like, my skull yeah although i mean yeah, I you can fall and fracture your skull but it wouldn't be a whoops fractured my skull moment yeah it wouldn't be like oh well you know i'll get it checked out eventually yeah exactly kind of not thing. like a broken toe around two months later in may they found the final four bodies they were in a ravine further into the woods Ooh. one had a fractured skull Mm. again so we've got two fractured skulls now and two had crushed ribs which are injuries more commonly associated with fatal car accidents and not possible to be caused by human force oh my god so huge impacts injuries basically i don't know how deep the ravine is but like I was gonna could say... they have fallen into the ravine no one has any like i've watched a lot of videos about it i've not done as much research as you know there are people that have websites dedicated to this and have read all of their diaries yeah which like i haven't done but i've not seen anyone say might they have just fallen into the ravine yeah i imagine the injuries wouldn't be consistent with a fall into the ravine because otherwise it would be like oh well quite clearly they have fallen into the ravine and sustained these injuries yeah um, and also then um, surely there would be a consistency between the ones who had the injuries and the ones who didn't as in, and yeah. in that they would all kind of have similar injuries if it were the ravine fall was it definitely pre-mortem or anti-mortem that those injuries were begotten <laughs> do you mean that they did they break their ribs before they died yeah well this is a thought that i've had because mm. they have no outside traumas like external traumas like bruising that you oh my might God. have but because i'm a morbid little human and i know some things about corpses right. um <laughs> it's not a good it's not I'm a good thing just, to have just on your cv if they were already dying of hypothermia mm. and then they broke their ribs in some way yeah they might not have had time to develop bruises right. before they died because yeah. you know like if you well, get punched in the really face slow. it's the next day that you yeah get the bruises if the veins are broken and you're bleeding internally then oh yeah that was the bruises happen. yeah but depending on like because my thought is like if they were stumbling around in the dark because mm. it was night they're stumbling around in the dark they fall in the ravine they break their ribs and they die yeah like if it's that fast and they're already dying of hypothermia if it's that fast is there time for bruises to develop and is it a spooky thing that they don't have bruises or is it a natural thing Mm. the blood just didn't have time to get there i mean they're basically dead because i swear bruises can show up post-mortem that weren't there yeah so um that often is like from gravity so uh, your blood pools right because say you're lying on your back then well you your heart's not beating back. anymore so it's all gonna go that way oh it's such a weird thought yeah, yeah. so <laughs> um just just an odd thing that could be spooky or could yeah, just be yeah their blood might have frozen before it got there yeah but also like you'd think if someone fell down a ravine and broke their ribs there would be physical like gashes in them and stuff yeah. like if you you fall on a rock and it caves your rib in the rock's gonna get yeah. some rib on it and you're gonna be That's like bloodied true. by it aren't you very it's not true just gonna be. so i think it is quite unless weird. they were like flat rocks which like yes you still might bleed but like just just impact not like impalement. 
Yeah, yeah. Another fact which has been made much of mm. is that the woman among them was missing her tongue, which oh. everyone is like, what a nightmare. Oh my God, what happened? I've heard different accounts, but she, mm. apparently she was also missing her eyes and part of her lips, oh. which is consistent with animals yeah i was gonna say snacking like it's weird that it's only her but those body parts make sense as like mm, nice soft animal food mm. yes they're soft and so animals like to eat them and mm. also she was lying face down in a stream so it could even have been fish or her decomposition was sped up because of the stream yeah yeah so it could have been decomposition rather than animal. Yeah, than animal. and there were there were two women, right? And it was just this one woman who had those specific injuries. Yes, I actually don't know which group the other woman is in. I don't think the other woman was missing her tongue. I don't think there was no, a like woman tongue har- yeah. <laughs> harvesting creep going around like, oh, a tongue from a woman. What a delight. God. Yeah, I, I feel <laughs> like that to me, again, like it's, it's freaky in the circumstances, but to me that's fairly like, well, animals will be animals. They were wearing clothing that had been taken from the other one, from the other people. Oh, so Everyone they says, survived longer probably and... Yes. Mm. Everyone says that they had taken the clothes off of the people after they'd died, which I'm sure is what happened. But also, you know, (laughs) if your friend's definitely going to die and you're freezing, I'm just saying. That's a point, actually. And also, like, I mean, I know the kind of impact wounds that the ones in the ravine had um, were apparently not consistent with any kind of force that a human could give. But in terms of just like the fractured skull of one of the guys in the woods, for instance, if it was a case of you're all walking, you're like, well, these three are very much on their last legs. We've decided for the greater good to take their clothes off them and leave them. And then, oh, this guy has a little bit more fight in him than we expected. Crash. Okay, now I have his clothes. Yeah, which like, it's probably not what happened. It probably was that they froze and they were, you know, had to stay warm i also know that some of them were wearing the clothes of the others like they tied them around their feet as shoes because they had no shoes on then we get into another weird part which is like the other ones the other weird parts i'm like oh well you know here's something that it could be explained no their clothing seemed to be covered in high levels of radiation levels of radiation that in fact exceed standards for people working with radioactive substances and they had had nothing to do with radioactive substances as far as we know prior one of them was i think a nuclear engineer okay person at their uni yeah but i don't think it's at the point that everyone's clothes yeah, they're not is covered contaminate. in radiation yeah that's mad some people have claimed that the whole area had high levels of radiation mm. My question is, why were they testing for radiation in the first place? Such a good point. Like, oh, here's some campers that we found and they've all died in the woods. Let's check for radiation. That's a really good point. I've never thought of that. Like, I don't know if it's... Could it be a sort of standard test where... Because I know, (laughs) just from TV dramas in hospitals, people will go, oh, yeah, the bloods have come back. You know, there's no toxic substances found no radiation la 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 so i don't know if it's just a routine thing where lots of possibilities are checked yeah it it could have been and also you know it's the start of the 60s so nuclear weapons are a thing true so it might have been that they were like oh you know what we've got a geiger muller counter let's waft it and see (laughs) but i just I just don't know about that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that is weird. And it also could have been like, oh, we have no idea what's happened to them. Maybe they have... Yeah. Yeah. Although, again, like, you'd think you find bodies (laughs) in the snow, in whatever mysterious circumstances, but you're like, oh, their skin is black and falling off. Um, They've clearly tried to, like, tie things around their feet or build a fire or whatever to keep themselves warm. It's February in this pass obviously they died of frostbite the circumstances are weird but you're not yeah, going to be like, like Let's why would they leave their tent if actually they died of radiation poisoning 
<laughs> yeah, I <laughs> suppose actually it is a leap. It would be like if you found someone stabbed in an alley and you went, I just want to check that they've not drowned though. I, I have, you know, <laughs> just want to, which I guess, I mean, you, you do in the post-mortem, but not with the objective of finding out that they haven't drowned. On to the theories. Theory number one, the night pee theory. Ooh. Pretty standard people have thought this one for a while someone got up to have a wee in the night yeah and they were swept away by strong wind which is like a slightly bizarre theory it like, is but at the same time it's like weather conditions in these places is a kind of a stuff that we can't really imagine from here yeah so i suppose it could have happened mm. they were swept away by, by strong wind they called for help and the others came to help them and mm. got swept away too got lost and couldn't get back yeah. to the tent but why is the tent cut because oh, God, yeah. if you were like martha i've gone for a wee and now i'm being swept away <laughs> yeah, i wouldn't slash I wouldn't... through to get to you no because like a zip i don't know if they checked this because we'll get into it but not everything's mm. been released right um i don't know if the, they tested to see if the zip was stuck because mm. if the zip was like broken in some way that they couldn't get out yeah then it's not mysterious at all that they would cut the tent. Also, I guess just for speed in terms of like, because if it's a tent that's supposed to withstand these way, way, way below freezing conditions, it might well be that there are several layers. In which case, if yes. someone's like screaming because they're literally being blown away, you might be like, I just need to get out of this and grab them. And yes, you have but up. I accept that. But at the same time, would you not then be like, ah, now we've cut our only way of shelter. <laughs> we're and die so anyway. now we're all freezing to death in the tent yeah, because we've cut I don't it open. Know. It's sort of as though they weren't planning on returning to the tent. Um, which rules out in my mind the night pee theory. Night pee theory also, yeah. the radiation. Where's that come yeah. from? Theory number two. Well, mm -hmm. it's sort of two theories I've roped into one because I'm just not having it. Escaped <laughs> prisoners or a robbery. The theory is that some <laughs> escaped prisoners or robbers came along, frightened them out their tent, and then killed them all? Or nah, left them to wander the That's wilderness? a load of bollocks, however way you put it. But the injuries can't be caused by humans, no. at least the ribs and things like that. Nothing of value was taken. No. Apparently um, this, this group of people that was big enough to overpower this seasoned hiking group as well is then completely yeah. fine and just disappears. There are also no other tracks in the yeah. snow. So, That's just a bit stupid, really. Yeah, and also escaped prisoners, as we all learned from the Northern Lights, <laughs> if you're in a cold place and you're a prisoner trying to escape, you need warm clothes or you'll freeze to death. Yeah, I was going to say, like, your first point of call would not be to chase someone out of their tent. You, you'd be like, oh, God. Unless they were trying to steal their gear and clothing, but then yeah, why didn't they... The tent. Yes, but then why... First of all, there aren't tracks, so they weren't there. Mm. But also, <laughs> why didn't they then steal the clothing off... Of, I suppose the ravine people. But there aren't tracks, they weren't there, it didn't happen. Yeah, no. And also, <laughs> just, none of it. if you're... Like, even if we imagine that somehow some escaped prisoners and robbers decided it was a good idea to go out in the middle of a minus 30 degree, like, snowstorm night yeah. for, for shits and gigs. How many were there initially? Like, eight, ten? There are nine. Hiking? Nine hikers with all this gear, clearly equipment. One of which fought a bear with a hammer. Yeah, they have, like, hammers. <laughs> they have things to slash tents open. They are warm comparatively inside their tent. And then, like, however many raggedy, almost dead people turn up, like, please, can we have your stuff? It'd just be like, like, they could very yeah. easily take them. So they exactly. wouldn't run. Yeah, no, I just, I don't believe that one. No, and I also, think that's quite silly. It's um, Dead Mountain, which is where it took place, is very rarely ever traversed by the, like, local tribes people that live there. Mm or anyone else because yeah, I was say, they like, if weren't... there are no prisons on dead mountain then why on earth would any prisoners from anywhere else go where should we go oh i like the sound of that dead mountain place let's yeah pop it's, over just... There. <laughs> it's just not i just don't think it happened yeah another theory is animal attack 
Yeah. I've so heard that one. a big spooky animal, well, not spooky, just a big animal, mm. um, frightened them out of their tent and chased them away. Mm. But first of all, it's unlikely that animals were in the area because, mm. again, dead mountain, not a lot habits there and there aren't any tracks for any yeah. animals and also i i don't know if it's an animal that's big enough that nine people who've stood up to scary animals before would all have immediately run then surely it would have been powerful enough to get some of them so you'd find True. you know half eaten remains and things like that rather than you know if because if it's that much slower than them why would they run well that's very true and also again you know yuri fought a bear with a hammer yeah so and he clearly got away pretty well the first time yeah like yuri's not taking anything from any animals mm. so i just don't think yeah. it happened and there Actually, were no tracks I, I don't know i'm not a wilderness survivor or a hiker or anything but um i i would imagine the advice is pretty much always stay in the tent if there's an animal around like i can see how you would be really really freaked out and want to not be trapped in there but surely logically you're more vulnerable out in the open either way i think it depends because obviously if you can see the animal mm. you know how to defeat it whereas if it's prowling around outside your tent you're mm. just in there like obviously it's not great to leave the tent and fight it. I don't think I would, but it's not like they left the tent to fight it. They left the tent and ran for a mile or further. Yeah, without which any you'd shoes. think you'd like, you might be like, okay, guys, let's stand ready with this knife in case. And then if, like, if something starts to bite through the tent, then we'll slash the other side and get out. But yeah, you'd think that would be thing. an absolute last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it be exactly. A preemptive measure. One thing that I'll just mention off the back of animal attack is there's mm. a theory a yeti attacked them. Yeah, I'm not going to go into one. it. Just no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so another theory: avalanche. Oh. They they heard the boom of an avalanche beginning. They cut the tent and they ran, which is acceptable. They probably yeah. would have known what to do in an avalanche because they're hikers in the Russian wilderness. Yeah. Fair enough. However. <laughs> i'm just like here's a plausible theory and here's why it's wrong yeah there's never been an avalanche reported there Ugh. there's no evidence an avalanche happened at the camp the snow on the tent is natural settling yeah like if the tent stayed no. there yeah exactly then like they might have thought there was going to be an avalanche and then yeah. been like oh no we're now in the woods and we don't know how to get back to our mm. camp which is plausible but why would they have thought there's an avalanche? Yeah. Well, I'll tell I, you. Oh, okay. Ooh. I was going to say, that's the one that so, makes the most sense to me so far. Yes. Like, even if maybe there wasn't an actual avalanche, maybe they thought there was, completely mm. panicked, and just ran. Yeah. And also, it could explain if there actually was one, some of the high-impact injuries. But then, if, they, if it was that high-impact, surely there would be evidence of it elsewhere. So, And the tent yes, definitely exactly. would not have survived. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have stayed in the tent. Yes. Well, also, um, the tent and the whole camp mm. was apparently reported to have been put up quite amateurishly. Oh, interesting. But these were all like, very experienced people. Yeah. So I don't know whether yeah. it was because they were kind of setting up post walking through a snowstorm. So they were just doing it sloppily and like, it'll be fine for tonight. Yeah. But apparently it wasn't put up to a very high standard. So again, if there was an avalanche, like, definitely wouldn't have good luck the tent. Mm. but yeah so speaking of hearing something you think might have been an avalanche let's go on to the various government conspiracy theories oh. there were bright orange orbs seen in the sky the night the hikers died and then throughout um february and march interesting so some people have said that these might have been missiles that mm. the russian government was testing because it's quite a deserted yeah. area people think that the sound of the bombs might have frightened the hikers into thinking that there was an avalanche mm. so what they heard was a bomb exploding and they assumed it was an avalanche and ran there's also a theory that they might have been testing radioactive weapons hence the radiation, hence the radiation. Mm. some people have said like oh maybe a bomb exploded near them and that's how they got the injuries but mm. like surely Could there's you not evidence find an of a bomb. bomb yeah 
Yeah, there's a theory that the hikers may have traveled through a classified location where radioactive testing was happening, which is how they have the radiation, and uh. then were hunted down by the military because of what they'd seen. I, mean, I think this theory might have been made up by someone who's not a massive fan of the Russians in yeah. the 1950s. Yeah, it would be a weird like also if you're gonna do i don't know if you're gonna do an extermination there are a lot of weird loose ends that they have left if that is what's happened you know exactly. like you could, you could do it more cleanly yeah like i don't know whether they because my first thought was like we'll just kill them and take the bodies they just yeah. disappeared but then you know people will be like oh we'll keep looking and we'll keep looking whereas if you find the corpse that's like that. oh, okay. they're there yeah but i don't yeah and it just doesn't make sense with things like the slashing of their 10 and the impact injuries and fractured lardy dars <laughs> fractured lardy dars like i would don't think, fracture your lardy yeah. dars because <laughs> i would think a a really logical thing to do to if, if they were going yeah if we kill them and take the bodies people will know there's been foul play whereas if we just leave them exposed then people will think tragic accident so you scare them out of their tent uh, possibly by literally being like get out of your tent i have a gun or by you know simulating weird noises or whatever and then you chase them and then you just leave them yeah true because they will die yeah um, the other thing <laughs> i love the idea of like these russian military soldiers being like Ooh, <laughs> ghosties <laughs> it's me bigfoot come to take my prey <laughs> yeah exactly like yeah <laughs> um, in the government conspiracy theory there's mm. also a theory of a cover-up so mm. there were many military officials hurrying the investigation along oh. there the area was closed off for three years after the incident the 10th hiker yuri yudin helped identify items that were found in the camp but he mm. didn't recognise a cloth, which is described as military style. I don't know. Green? <laughs> but also the thing is, is I don't know, like, uh, first of all, what kind of cloth? How big? Is it like a flannel? And yeah. also high level camping equipment is probably on par with, especially like military at the time. grade. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know how people are like, these are military grade hiking boots. Exactly. This is what people wear. Like, because they need to be able are... to withstand stupid conditions. Yeah, and especially like in the 50s when everything was kind of like stepping up a bit, mm. they were probably the same. So yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I, so I would think so too. Um, also, skis and glasses. Uh, you know, he didn't know, he didn't recognise them. The documents were kept classified until the 70s. There are parts that still haven't been released. You know, for example, I say, I'm saying about the zip, yeah. like of the tent. Mm. We don't know if that just wasn't looked at or whether they're just not telling us about what it. What was found or not, yeah. What was found. And they never released the film that the hikers took themselves because one of the women was um, a photographer and would oh. always take pictures of all of her journeys and all of her hikes. Ah, you'd really and think that would... Well, I guess it has been looked at, just not released. Yeah, it's just not mm. been... It was, like, classified even from people that were part of the investigation and like mm. kind of lower down officials who have retired have come out and said like they wouldn't let us access various things they wouldn't look into various leads we were told like we say this and that's it it's a theory i yeah. don't want to be murdered so yeah. i'm not gonna say yeah. it's the truth <laughs> but those are the theories about the government mm. on to the two that i believe oh okay so there's two that i'm like it's either this or this and that's it all right and there are parts that still aren't completely explained yeah. in one of them but we'll get yeah. into it first theory aliens okay bright flying spheres in the sky uh-huh government cover-up radiation lack of tracks inhuman trauma from within to be fair i it's such a bizarre case that the, that does tick more boxes than other theories do. Yeah. So obviously the aliens woo, like come down in their ships, which is where there's flying orbs. Maybe the lights just frighten them and they run. Maybe they're like, hey, we guys, we're, hello, we're aliens. Like, like oh, so much. my God. 
for coming to the meeting point and then they like run and they're like oh okay is this customary and then they like chase them and there's radiation from their spaceship maybe they took them up and broke their ribs as they dropped them we don't know Mm. but I think that's so annoying because that actually like I do not believe that if aliens that intelligent exist that would have been all that we have you know encountered of them but if we ignore how sort of ridiculous it is on the surface of it, it answers more of the questions than... (laughs) It answers all of the questions. Why did they run? Because there were aliens. Maybe (laughs) aliens leave different tracks than humans are trained to look for. Or maybe they were overhead the whole time, just with... Maybe they just fly in general. And then, you know, the people ran, or maybe they pulled them up into their spaceship, did mm. some experiments and then like put them down and that's why there's radiation and then they were like left in the snow for ages we don't you know it could have happened yeah yeah no i can see that on to slightly more plausible theory okay which is the one that i am inclined towards okay so basically there's this thing called infrasound which is sound which is below human hearing level and it causes anxiety fear and psychological disturbance Mm. it's also used fun fact in um well allegedly used i don't know um but i've heard it's used in the soundtracks of horror films (gasps) oh god in some to like put you on edge immediately yeah which is like fun but also quite disturbing because i don't want that to be going yeah i prefer not to be mind controlled like i really I'd really love never to experience the effects of infrasound, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. The theory is that the wind on Dead Mountain can reach this level and that all of the hikers are sat in the tent at night. They're tired. They've been hiking all day. They've walked through a snowstorm that day Mm. and out of nowhere, they all begin to feel inexplicable fear, anxiety, panic and they're Mm. freaking out they can't know why but they're completely freaked Mm. which is like it is a spooky environment like i suppose you're there with your friends and like you're having a good time but also there could be anything out there yeah that's the thing i think because it's it's easy to go oh well why on earth would you cut open the tent in literally any circumstance you're obviously going to die but then even you know in things like if you and i and another friend have been in a tent in a very safe campsite in the uk and when are telling ghost stories it's really easy to freak yourself out and be like i don't know what to do and, and want to like run and things which are obviously stupid um yeah well so I can very also much i can imagine you know like maybe even the zip got frozen shut mm. is a thought but if you're feeling this way and you need to get out it's maybe it's too hot in the tent um, that's true like if you're getting claustrophobic and stuff you're just like i just i don't you don't think yeah out. and the zip isn't working and mm. everyone's feeling the same way it might make sense that you cut the tent open yeah because it can have quite severe effects on people mm. so the theory is that they then completely panicked and ran from the tent and then when they're further down the mountain they can't hear well, they can't hear it anyway, but they don't feel the effects of the infrasound. Like, what the hell are we thinking? Let's go back. And then they can't find their way back because it's night. Yeah. And then they freeze. So that's the one that I go for. It doesn't explain the radiation, mm. um, but <laughs> the only one that seems to is either the government or, or aliens. aliens. Yeah. I, so oh, I, 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 I don't want to say I like, because obviously tragic event, but um, I also kind of am inclined towards the infrasound theory. But it's, yeah, it's the radiation and the, um, the internal injuries. Although I guess yeah. I, internal injuries, I don't know how unheard of it is for, for there to be fractures and such in people who have died by other means and it's not particularly showing on the outside. Like, I'm sure that does happen. I'm satisfied with my explanation. There are probably people who out there who know a lot more about corpses in the cold than I do who are like, mm. no, that wouldn't be the case. Mm. But it, the only one that I'm less sold on is the person halfway up the hill with the skull fracture. I can't understand yeah. how you would get that. I suppose you could fall on a rock and fracture your skull quite easily, yeah. sharp little rock don't know yeah but I, I don't it doesn't either. it doesn't explain everything but it does explain the initial I running think, away 
definitely the best explanation for why the hell they would abandon their tent in the way they did. Especially because there aren't tracks of anything exactly, else that could without, have frightened Yeah, them. without an actual external influencing factor. Um, yeah. And I guess the radiation, they wouldn't necessarily know when it's from. Like, it's possible, you know, in the government thing where they're like, oh, maybe they walked through a testing site without knowing it earlier. That yeah. could still have happened. But oh, they yeah. just, like, one, it's like, oh, we time... walked through a testing site, didn't it? And then... They didn't know, but then they weren't hunted by the government. They were just they terrified just died. in their yeah. tent. Yeah, well, I think... Do you remember that one time we were on DOV and we accidentally walked through... Wasn't it, like, through... Um, it was oh, like a gun range or something. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was specifically... It was, like, missile testing. Um, yeah, we walked through a missile testing range and we were like, oh, my God, I need to leave. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I really don't know. I That's actually happened to me, like, a couple of times. I because in um, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's, I, once or twice when I've been on holiday, I think in Spain, there's, like, this huge caged community being like, don't go in here because we're testing missiles. But then, yeah, which is, like good on spain they've caged it off in england yeah. you could walk and see a sign and be like oh by the way be careful because we're testing missiles <laughs> yeah. not like just in the same way go through you a might gate. Go, yeah like like oh don't cross this field because farmers might think you're a dog and shoot you it's like it's not these two things are not the same i don't think people with eyesight that's so bad they think a human's a dog should be allowed in gun. And that's, yeah agreed you know. so the official inquest concluded that quote an unknown compelling force mm -hmm. was the hikers ultimate cause of death and also the cause of their behavior so Ooh. we don't know why they did it yeah and they all died of hypothermia is Blimey. what they said that's wow. all of the information i found on the dyatlov pass incident which they've renamed that area of dead mountain the dyatlov pass now Go. which is like Hi, ma'am, I'm going on a hike and I'm going to go through the Dyatlov Pass. Dyatlov, no? what an interesting name. What's that from? Oh, the, the guy who led the expedition where people horrifically died, you know. It's, uh, oh, yeah, and it's on name. Dead Mountain. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Other Martha's podcast, the show where a drama student and a film graduate try to make sense of things we wish we were qualified in instead. If you enjoyed listening to today's episode, please do subscribe to our channel for more. 